step-by-step -step math series presents prime factorization. All right, let's first define what prime factorization is. It's a number greater than 1, which can be written as a unique product of primes. Okay, so before we start doing some examples, we need to know all the first eight uh, prime numbers, and that is 2, 3, 5, 7, 11, 13, 17, and 19. And it keeps on going. Um, let's first do 6. Now, we know 6 is not a prime number because it's not on our list. So it has to be composite. And so we need to know if this number how do we break it down into primes? Well, we look at the first prime number, which is 2. And we have to know our multiplication tables. And I do know that 2 will go into 6 three times. Now, the number that I got here in the bottom, which is 3, 2 times 3 will give me 6. The, the number in here that was left over is a prime number. This will indicate to me that I have to stop. When I get a prime number in the bottom, that tells me I have to stop. So all the numbers that go outside of this line are prime numbers. And in this case, 2 and 3 are prime numbers. And 2 times 3 will give me 6. Let's try 24. I want to know if we can break down 24. Yes, we can, because we know 24 is an even number. And we know that the only even prime number is 2. So in this case, I know 2 will go into 24 12 times. Now, we need to keep using 2's until we can't use them anymore. And I know 2 will go into 12 6 times. So it's good to know your multiplication tables. 6 is not a prime number, so I keep on breaking this down. 2 goes into 6 3 times. 3 is a prime number, so I'll stop. So 24 is equal to 2 times 2 times 2 times 3. Some instructors will have you do it as 2 to the third times 3, which if you want to check this, 2 to the third is 8 and 8 times 3 is 24. So that's correct. Uh, 35. Let's break down 35. If you know your multiplication tables, um, you know 2 and 3 won't go into 35, but you do know that 5 will go into 35 7 times. And 7 is a prime number. So, 35 is equal to 5 times 7. Okay, then let's try 51. 51 looks kind of weird. Um, you might say, well, I know all, all my multiplications 12 by 12, and I don't remember 51, so it's probably a prime number. Well, you would be wrong. 51 uh, is divisible by 3. And how do I know that? Well, if I take 51 and if I add the digits and divide by 3, I get 2, which is nice, which is an even number. It's divisible. 3 does go into 6 2 times. You can take any number you want. If you add the digits and you divide, if you can divide by 3 evenly, then you know 3 will divide into the original number. 3 goes into 51 17 times which is, again, is a prime number, 17. So 51 is equal to 3 times 17. Now, you might say to yourself, well, what about if I didn't know that 51 um, was divisible by 3? Um, well, that's why you have to sort of learn some of the techniques that we're doing here. Um, is it even? And if it is, then you can divide by 2. Does it, does it end with the 5? Yes, if it does, then you can divide by 5. 51 is a special case, but try it anyway. Add the, add the, uh, the digits. And when, after you sum, then divide by 3. If it's divisible by 3, then you know it's the original number is divisible by 3. But what other shortcuts are there? Well, let's take 51 again. And if you take 51, um, can you imagine? 2, 3, 5, 7, 11, 12, 13, 17, 19, and it keeps on going, of course. 
uh, probably gets very close to 53 and beyond. So, you know, where do you stop? I mean, do you have to check all the numbers up to 51? No. Um, what you can do is you can take a shortcut. You can shorten the list instead of going from 2 all the way um, to 53, which is the, the prime number that um, is, is a prime number. You don't have to go all the way to 53. What you can do is you can make this list shorter. And how do I do that? The way to do that is by taking the square root of 51. Well, it's a little bit hard to take the square root of 51. Um, so I'm going to estimate. I'm going to go up to 64 because I know what the square root of 64 is. It's 8. So I want to go higher than the number 8. Okay, 8 is over here in between 7 and 11. So what I need to do is I need to check 7, 5, 3, and 2. I need to check these numbers against 51. And if one of them goes into 51, then I know the number is not prime but composite. And so 51, 2 goes into 51 how many times? not very evenly. 51 goes into 3? Yes, 17 times. And so, again, 51 equals 3 times 17. So, you can do this with any number. For example, 23. Okay? Instead of um, having um, to divide all the numbers up to 23 to see if we can find a factor. That's what these are, really. Factors. Um, you know, we can take 23 and take the square root of it, and there's an easier um, number to take the square root, which is 25, which is 5, which means that I got to look at 5, 3, and 2. That's all I need to see. I need to test those three out. Uh, and if none of them, if 2, 3, or 5 doesn't go into 23, then 23 is going to be prime number. So does 2 go into 23 nicely? No. Does 3 go into 23 nicely? No. Does 5 go into 23 nicely? No. So 23 is a prime number. And that's the next number here. So you see that um, there's a few techniques, right? If the number ends in 0, 2, 4, 6, 8, we know that it's divisible by twos, we know that if you sum the numbers and if it's divisible by three, then you know it's then the original number is divisible by three. Uh, we know that if it ends in five or zero, it's divisible by five. Um, and this other technique where you take the number and you take the square root of it, that will limit your list of numbers that you need to check which, by the way, uh, computers do that to check to see if a number is prime or not.